it's also such a, a hard thing. Well, at least for me on YouTube, uh, where I have trouble with with this type of thing, which is all the labels for martial arts. Because mm -hmm. if I'm making a video, if I'm talking about this or that specifically, I've got to label it. But even if I'm doing something specifically where, look, I caught this wrist lock and I really enjoy exploring this type of technique or entry and wow, it's a very esoteric looking thing. I still don't know what to label it as because I've learned it on my own or have learned it from a completely different martial art that isn't famous for it. So it's like the whole idea of labels is yeah, so yeah. hard to wrap my brain around. Like, because what people I think forget is that it's us humans who describe things. It's us who see the differences, compare and contrast things. And then we choose to call this, this, and that, mm. that. But right. what it actually is, could, could be completely a different separate topic. So when I do like a koregaeshi and then show show it on the channel where it's like, this is one of my favorite techniques and it's super goofy or whatever and uh, interesting and, and, and lower percentage so it feels cool to get it. I could call it Aikijitsu, could call it Aikido, right. I could just call it BJJ or Butterfly Wrist Lock from Chin Na. Or even Wing Chun, we've seen people from Wing Chun doing that wrist lock. So it's like, sure. Why does yeah, it, it exists in tons of martial arts systems. I could name others. You see it in Tai Chi, you see it in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, you see it in Judo, et cetera, et cetera. I think we're dealing not just with labels, because a label is, uh, it's giving a name to something. Mm -hmm. it, they're, they're, might, it might come with some baggage, but that baggage is what we're talking about. That baggage is putting movements techniques into a faction into a cult system right yeah into the cult of aikido into the cult of karate into the cult of brazilian jiu-jitsu etc etc like which faction will you join which one which of all the martial arts is true as if it were a religion and right. <laughs> that's where it gets very strange a wrist lock is a wrist lock is a wrist lock it's bending a wrist in the wrong direction and people want to get dogmatic about that for some reason. And we build up philosophical movements around the idea of, I know 15 different ways to bend your wrist in the wrong position. I know a dozen different ways to make your elbow hurt. It's <laughs> when, when you say the quiet part out loud, it sounds incredibly stupid, but right. There are Sorry. no new martial arts techniques, I, I would say this. I'll tell you a little story about the time that I invented the three-quarter Nelson. Did I say three-quarter Nelson? I'm, I meant quarter Nelson. So three-quarter Nelson with the gable grip, quarter Nelson with the, with the okay. uh, double wrist lock here. Okay. So when I was fairly new to grappling, I discovered the quarter Nelson independently, having never been taught it. Quarter Nelson, I break his posture down, I get a figure four wrist lock on the back of his head, I roll in my throw, I might do some nasty stuff, right? If you get a whizzer, if you get a collar tie, if you change the position, lock your hands up like this, pull the elbows in really tight, then you've got a lot of control over your opponent and their posture. And I was like, wow, this is golden. Why hasn't anybody ever done this before? And then one day I was looking at some ancient Greek statues and I'm looking at these statues of wrestlers and one of them is doing my move. And I was like, that's my move from thousands of years ago. <laughs> what? And then I start looking it up and I start seeing my move in, in other sources like old catch wrestling books. And then I start seeing modern grapplers doing this. I didn't see it before because I didn't know it before. Like I said, we cannot see what we don't already believe. If we haven't experienced it, if we don't already know it to be true, we don't see it. Exactly. This is such a good such a good story because specifically of that like blindness of uh mm. the person who, who isn't aware of a particular aspect or how it works right because you have a series called a uh, fantastic fictional fight scenes right yeah we adore that one as a major geek um absolutely one of the best Man, i'll have things. to make more now yeah <laughs> no pressure <laughs> um but i was gonna say i remember when I started 
training combat sports a bit more seriously and when I sort of hit that um, a first step into actually being able to spar and right. roll and do it carefully and feel free and not scared doing it. I remember going back to like movies I would watch and then checking out action scenes on like the TV and stuff. And it mm -hmm. just, it was so different than how <laughs> I used to look at it. It all kind of sucks mm -hmm. really. <laughs> like I can't yeah, yeah. enjoy a typical action movie fight anymore. <laughs> it's so preposterous. Even oh, yeah. in real movies, even like drama thrillers, they are very realistic, gritty. And then some policeman fights somebody and it's like, when they fly, hit the ground, don't even have the wind knocked out. They just get up and do more. And it's like, mm -hmm. what is this? <laughs> so that's another example of that. Like, I wasn't able to see that before I actually learned how fighting actually works.